Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm really thrilled to, thrilled to join you virtually and to share this experience with you. We are delighted to be co-hosting this event with New Brunswick Pharmacist Association, and we are incredibly grateful for the support from GSK that made this event possible. It is so amazing to have partners who recognize and truly see the transformation happening in pharmacy right now. As some of you know, the Canadian Pharmacists Association launched an important national initiative over a year ago, recognizing that the profession is at a critical junction. The pandemic had a huge impact on all of us and pharmacy practice will never be the same again. Through our work on wellness, we have had the opportunity to meet with countless pharmacy leaders, people who care deeply about the profession and the patients that we all serve. While our, our speaker today is not a pharmacist, he is just as passionate that we all serve. About how we can transform our healthcare system and how to lead us to practice that is both fulfilling and puts people at the center. Mark Stolo is the founding director of People Before Patients, where he works with a dedicated network of professionals committed to inviting healthcare to step into the furthest reaches of the possible. He has more than 20 years experience working in healthcare, supporting people in understanding the stories they shape about our healthcare reality and how they show up to care. Mark has accompanied hundreds of organizations through the process of getting to know their deepest wishes to inform a new quality of sense and choice making. Mark is going to take us on a journey to help us start to reimagine pharmacy practice and the kind of future we want to create. Today's talk will be a bit different where Mark will encourage us to use this time for reflection. So we won't be opening the session up for a Q&A period at the end of the talk. Together, we will discover that there is a path to a bolder and brighter tomorrow, and that the journey began with waking up to where we find ourselves right now. Mark, thank you for being here today. I'll let you take it from here. Thank you so much for that uh, beautiful introduction. <clears throat> and like Kevin, I'm sorry that uh, Danielle is not here today. Um, but I do want to extend a heartfelt thanks to Kevin, Sadaf, and Danielle. It's really their leadership and passion for pharmacy practice that have helped to make this moment possible. I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your Sunday to be here with us. I hope that you will find it worthwhile, and I hope that today's talk will um, instigate something new in your practice and in your life. Today's talk grew from a seed that we planted with the CPHA about launching a national leadership program for pharmacists that would include visioning the pharmacy of the future. The premise of that program is very simple. If you want to design a more beautiful future for pharmacy, do it with those people who are architecting the pharmacy experience. That is all of you. That is why I'm here today. I'm here today to invite you to step into the strength that you possess to author a brighter and bolder story about the pharmacy experience. My sincerest hope is that you will honor that strength that you possess and seize this opportunity. I have the privilege in my day-to-day -day work of leading a nonprofit organization called People Before Patients. Our name points to something that is very simple so simple that it's often easy to miss. Long before anyone becomes a patient, they are a person. Now that personhood doesn't go away when they're diagnosed with a health problem. In fact, for many people, their sense of selfhood becomes even more pronounced post-diagnosis. Many people confront their deepest vulnerability and humanity through the tenuousness of it all. That's true of all of you as well. Beneath the veneer of your profession's white coat, you are all thinking and feeling people with hopes and dreams, fears and worries. It occurs to us at People Before Patients that it is that persistent truth of our experience, the vividness of our personhood, that is often overwhelmed 
by a healthcare system that can easily seduce us into a kind of forgetting. And in that forgetting, we feel like we're losing ourselves. And we're losing the thing that inspires us to show up fully every day to practice. Now that self-forgetting has a lot of names. Burnout, overwhelm, sadness, stress, frustration, ambivalence. They're all faces of the same insidious problem. Healthcare has forgotten its namesake. Somewhere, somehow, we forgot that our craft was the craft of caring. That was always supposed to be the one immutable KPI. You can't be good at health without being good at care. And what we're experiencing now is something like the story of Cain and Abel, where once we regarded these two as bonded brothers, health and care now often feel like they're on warring sides. And in that tug of war, it feels like the fabric of healthcare is fraying. So it begs the question, how do we come back home to that? How do we restore the luster to a pharmacy profession and a healthcare experience that was supposed to be about discovering the best in us, even in moments when we're not at our best? How do we take a dose of our own good medicine? Now here's where I need to be very honest with all of you. I don't know what the future looks like. I don't know whether AI takes over the world or climate change leaves an irreparable scar on the planet or whether a fragile healthcare system cracks under the weight of its charge. But here is one thing I do know and that I know without any hesitation. Any reimagining of the future must begin with a very deliberate and very honest showing up to the present. Because the future may be what comes next, but it is always informed by what we seed right now. All that we ever really have is right now. So in this reimagining experience, I want us to draw all of our energies fully into this moment together so that we can get to the heart of what is truly ailing us. Now, I don't have a prescription for you, even though it would be perfectly ironic to prescribe something to a group of pharmacists. All I have is the promise that as we get clear about the problem together, that brighter, bolder, more sunny future we're all eagerly seeking, it will peek out from behind the clouds that are shading our current experience. The one thing I'd say that we're really good at, at people before patients, is getting to the heart of the matter. That process we call sense-making. Now, sense-making is how we go about making sense of things, including how we know, and how that knowing shapes our reality, including this experience we call healthcare and by extension, pharmacy practice. Let me give you an example that you're probably familiar with. If you wanna know what's leading us astray in healthcare and more about the struggles of pharmacy, you only have to begin to understand how we make sense of these worlds. So while we like to succumb to the temptation to say, healthcare is broken, it isn't broken. It was designed this way, informed by a certain quality of seeing or languaging our healthcare experience. Again, a design informed by a particular quality of sense making. For example, if I refer to you as a provider, it implies that there is someone on the receiving end of that provision. And if I play out that way of making sense of things, I might get a version of healthcare that sounds something like, you are responsible for providing me my health, and by extension, I will hold you to that obligation. Now, I know that's a common tension that many healthcare providers feel. I suspect that this uncomfortably hits home for many of you because this reality is amplifying. But what you're feeling and experiencing is by design because it's baked into how we have structured our healthcare sense making. So the next time someone shows up to your pharmacy counter frustrated and demanding their medications, remember that in their minds, you are their provider and they have been socialized to believe that they are an empty vial waiting to be filled. We have designed an experience of healthcare that often shows up transactionally. Now that's not a critique. That's a way we have made sense of pharmacy practice 
despite what we know that inspires a greater sense of agency and self-determination in people. We are enculturating people to act like patients, and then we raise our hands in the air, confused by why that version of reality that we co-designed shows up that way in our day-to-day -day practice. One of the second order effects of being a provider is that it can estrange people from their health, a kind of deference or turning over one's power. In the words of Robert Piercig, sometimes the truth comes knocking and we say, go away, I'm looking for the truth. If you wanna understand the modern day truth of pharmacy practice, pay very close attention to what comes knocking at your door. Now, what begins to release us from any limited boundary in our sense-making is the awareness that it's the quality of our seeing and not what we are looking at that is limited. So pharmacy isn't the problem. The limited way in which we are making sense of pharmacy is the problem. Pharmacy practice, as we know it today, is simply the outcome of a particular way of making sense of things. Now, once we understand that, we unlock the freedom to look and practice from a new vantage point. Now, I know that's a lot to unpack in a short talk, because as all of you know, the story of healthcare and how we have made sense of it is very complex. Influenced by ancient and modern ideas, uh, there's a host of cooperating and competing characters and many plot twists in between. So I asked myself in preparing for today, how could I invite this deeper reflection into our sense making and leave you with the impression that the great healthcare turnaround begins with us turning around and seeing the world anew? Something I knew that wholeheartedly that each one of you, if you truly wanted, could undertake. So I thought a relevant story might help us along this path together. How many of you recognize this iconic cultural moment in time? It might be familiar to those of you who are movie buffs. That's the alarm clock from the movie Groundhog Day starring Bill Murray. For those that haven't seen the movie, Groundhog Day is the story of a weatherman named Phil Connors, played by Murray. Now Connors goes to Puxatawney, Pennsylvania to report on Puxatawney Phil. Puxatawney Phil is that famous groundhog that we hear about every year that predicts whether we'll have an early spring or a prolonged winter. Now Connors, during his stay in Puxatawney, unexpectedly finds himself reliving the same day over and over again. That 6 a.m. moment reflected in that alarm clock picture, and every moment after that is a carbon copy of the day before. So, in its really stripped back form, Groundhog Day is the story of a rodent that predicts the future, who is visited by a weatherman, who is also in the future predicting business, who becomes stuck in a never ending present. Now, here's where the story gets interesting and metaphorically relevant for us. Because like Phil Connors, what we really want is to free ourselves from this all too familiar, less than satisfying experience and create a new future for pharmacy practice. We want this day to become a new day. But that demands that we wake up to a new way of making sense of things. And that waking up is what unravels the knot that frustratingly has us bound to the sameness of the pharmacy experience and more largely of healthcare. And so the story goes that Phil Connors in the movie tries everything to wriggle his way out of the dilemma he's in, which is kind of where all the funny business happens. I mean, he tries everything, every tactic, every maneuver, every turn of a trick, and still he finds himself staring at that same 6 a.m. alarm clock day in and day out and living out the same day over and over again. There's a moment in the movie where Bill turns to his colleague Ralph and asks him, what would you do if you were stuck in one place and every day was exactly the same, and nothing you did mattered? Ralph's answer to him, that about sums it up for me. Does that feel familiar? 
Because what I have heard from many pharmacists and healthcare professionals that they have the nagging sense that they wake up to the same itch every day. And I equally get the sense that they would be incredibly grateful if the rash that has formed from all that itching would finally heal. Like Phil Connors, healthcare has been living out this legacy that if you want to change the future, just keep manipulating the parts of the same story. New plans, new tactics, more money, more people. Let's throw everything at the problem and hope and pray that something sticks. It's the itch we just can't stop scratching, even though it only inflames the same sense-making problem. And it's not for a lack of good intention, because there's a furiousness and a dedication to this constant tactical maneuvering. The desire is there. We spend tons of money and expend a lot of energy on healthcare. You get the clear sense that we know there's a problem and there's a certain urgency to fix it, even if sometimes it feels slow and cumbersome. The pandemic was a glaring example of this kind of urgency in our way of doing things. And of course, the pandemic meant that for many of you, you woke up with that persistent sense of anxiety, that this day would feel a lot like yesterday. The, when is this going to end, this ease. I would suggest that maybe the pandemic was the same familiar song, just played a lot louder. For many pharmacists and healthcare professionals, it was Groundhog Day on a heavy dose of steroids. But you see, like quicksand, you can't get unstuck by wriggling your way out of this healthcare problem. In fact, the more we wriggle, the more stuck we're tending to feel. Even the healthcare outcomes that we're seeing reflect this pattern of stuckness or a sinking of sorts into the darker waters of critical health metrics that aren't getting better. And of course, we know it's insanity to try to solve a problem with the same quality of awareness that created it. So naturally, we're all feeling a kind of senselessness, which brings us back to why the real matter at hand is a sense-making problem. So what frees Phil Connors from Groundhog Day? And can it similarly free us in the architecting of a brighter and more beautiful future for pharmacy practice? Now in the movie, Andy McDowell plays opposite Murray as the character Rita Hansen. A lot of Phil Connors shenanigans in the movie are actually an attempt to manipulate Rita and win her affection. Connors tries repeatedly, day in and day out, to convince her to be with him. Now, Rita won't have any of it. She is resistant to his appeals, kind of like how we see endless resistance in many people struggling with their health despite every way we try to prescribe and cajole otherwise. Rita represents what is good and true and beautiful in all of us. Rita is the symbol of the thing that inspired you to get into practice in the first place, that deep well of care that echoed from below that said to you, go forth into the world and heal its inhabitants. Phil, in contrast, represents what we have lost that has us feeling stuck in the endless monotony of time. The cynical and skeptical side of us that says, this can never get better, so why even try? Or worse, keep trying the same familiar shtick. At one point in the movie, Rita says to Phil, I can never love someone like you. You only love yourself. Phil's answer to her, that's not true. I don't even like myself. I'm convinced that healthcare has arrived at the place where it doesn't quite like itself anymore. And so in turn, it's getting harder to love. If you're looking for evidence of this, think the great resignation or emptying pharmacist classrooms. Now that may sound like bad news, but it's actually the best of news. It often takes banging into the wall of self-dread and self-doubt to realize that we have been captive to a certain way of understanding ourselves and the healthcare world we inhabit. If you're looking for another movie metaphor, imagine Jim Carrey in The Truman Show when his boat collides with the domed wall of the reality he knows he has outgrown. That collective malaise many of us are feeling is that great big bump into the cul-de-sac 
of our current sense making. And that echoing sound that accompanies that bump, that's the truth knocking at our door, inviting us to step out of our habitual ways of knowing. So what is that great turnaround I alluded to earlier? What does Phil Connors discover through the everydayness of his experience that holds a very powerful lesson for our collective pharmacy future? There's a moment in the arc of Phil's journey where he finally gives into the totality of his experience. He stops all that wriggling, that compulsive manipulation of things, that trying to bend reality and Rita to his will. He lets go of the incessant need to solve his proverbial problem and abandons the fear that has been plaguing him. Well, you might be thinking, well, that sounds kind of banal, Mark, maybe even Pollyannish. You mean all I have to do is let go and things will be okay? What is it like this letting go thing? Is it a resignation? Is it a kind of exhaustion where I just succumb to the repetitiveness of it all? Not at all. The kind of let go that Phil experiences and that we are talking about here is more in the vein of waking up. But this kind of waking up is different than all the other days he wakes up and might be very different than the kind of waking up you might be used to. The real magic of waking up happens when we stop trying to solve a problem that is not the problem. For Connors, he thinks the problem is that the day won't change, so he keeps trying to force that to happen. The real problem is that Connors won't change. It's not the day that's the thorn in his side. It's how he's looking at the day. It's how he's making sense of it, which is why the world keeps showing up to him as the same problem. And it's only when he stops imposing his will on the wrong problem that the real change starts to take place. That's why your leadership is so important. Your change holds the key that unlocks the door to our new way of being in pharmacy practice. You are the architects of that more beautiful future you want to see in the world. You help the day become something new. But if you want to see the change, we need to begin with the quality of our seeing. That is a process of paying attention to what we are attending to. That is how we cultivate greater clarity. And in that clarity, the path to that more beautiful future becomes much more obvious. At the end of the day, what we attend to grows. Where we focus our attention in the form of a solution will amplify that reality. So if you're in a prescriptive mindset, every side effect demands another prescription. And we have millions of older adults in Canada who can testify to that truth. The framing of the problem or the sense-making of it all binds the solution. Our attention shapes our world which is why it's so important to become keenly aware of what sense-making is framing that attention. So if the way in which we are attending to a problem is not generating the world we hoped for, it's a clear signal that it's time to shift our attention. That's what I mean by waking up, opening our eyes to a new way of seeing. And so it happens that when Phil changes, the world changes. The day changes. What was an endless, repetitive nightmare becomes an infinite and wondrous beginning. And in that newfound way of being in the world, he finds this renewed sense of care and love. And in turn, he is loved. Everything he ever wanted becomes available to him simply by opening to it. He drops the rope. He steps out of the ring with the wrong problem. He stops arguing with a version of reality that is keeping him bound to the same old rodent trap. And that is why care is so powerful. Care invites opening. It invites us to welcome the day in the spirit of what is possible. It's the one thing that no one or no thing can ever take away from you. And when we give up on caring, we literally and figuratively lose ourselves. We lose our sense of meaning. 
we become frozen in time, frozen in our cynicism, frozen in our self-preoccupation, frozen by whack a mole that same shadow-fearing groundhog that we're convinced holds the solution to our future. And when we orient to the world and to our practice that way, everything loses its luster. The day becomes endlessly long. Everything feels like a prescriptive, repetitive transaction, a going through the motions of a pesky groundhog day. When we lose care, the telomeres of our humanity shorten. Now here's one thing I know with near certainty about your future. Tomorrow is Monday and you're going to wake up again, maybe even at 6 a.m. Now that waking up could feel like something you've done a thousand times before, or you can wake up and honor the truth that that moment is the only moment you have. And in that moment, you will decide if you want to turn around, look anew, see yourself and your practice for the first time. And if you make that choice to wake up with that renewed sense of all I have is this moment, and I will bring every ounce of care into it, I promise you, you will experience a day like you've never seen before, or maybe only one you can vaguely remember. You can be an architect, or you can be an artifact. The pharmacy of the future will be for those who create it. Now, as a final invitation, I want us to start a different conversation today. This is the moment when you lead us into the future. Now, I know in your day-to-day -day work, the focus of your attention is on the question, what's the matter with you? I want to shift the tide on that. Here's a different question for you. What matters to you? What do you care about? What can you wake up to in your own practice that would make a meaningful difference in your life and in the life of those you serve? Now, I want to invite you to reflect on that for a profound, meaningful moment. Let's just take a quiet moment together and just let that percolate. And then, if you're feeling brave and up to it, share with us in chat what arises for you from that reflection. And as you reflect, I will say thank you for having me today. I truly and profoundly and deeply look forward to what your tomorrow brings. Thank you very much.